Stephen Coonan, thanks for your time. When Barack Obama chose you to be his Undersecretary for Science, he had said, this is the moment that the planet begins to heal. What were your own views about global warming and the threat that it posed at that time? Well, I was focused at the time on developing technologies that would help reduce emissions in order to, quote, save the planet. And I, I helped understand what technologies had potential, where the government should be investing and so on. And I truly believe that it was the most important thing to be doing. But your book is called Unsettled. Now, that, I think, must reflect in some way your own journey. Why did you name it Unsettled? Well, in, in fact, a couple of years after I left the administration, I had occasion to look much more deeply into the science. And what I found, in fact, unsettled me. But I also found, of course, that the science was unsettled, not as settled as I had thought. And, and therefore, I began a seven-year journey in 2014, looking deeply at the science and also how the science is portrayed to the public and decision makers. Now, unsettled means, uh, of course, that the science is not settled. Uh, what you used to think may not uh, have been so, and or indeed what the uh, scientists were saying may have changed in time. What, ended, what have you ended up believing about global warming? Well, I, you know, I, almost all of my belief is founded upon reading the UN IPCC reports and similar reports by the US government, and then looking at the underlying research literature. And what I believe is that humans are certainly influencing the climate through growing greenhouse gases, mostly carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. I also believe that the globe on the average has warmed by about one, 1 1.2 degrees over the last 100 or 120 years. But I also believe, according to the reports, that beyond that, most of the extreme weather events that the public and the media are so focused on do not show any evidence of human influence. Can you give us a few uh, examples of the kind of catastrophes that we have been led to believe have been or will be occurring soon that you've found, well, it, it isn't so. So I, I like to use a line from the, the movie, The Princess Bride. I do not think the science says what you think it says. So for example, the reports say, and again, this is the consensus science talking, not Steve talking. There are no detectable human influences on hurricanes over the last 100 years. In the US, heat waves are no more common now than they were in 1900 and have not gone up in incidents over the last 60 years. Wildfires around the globe have gone down by about 25% since 2003. And yes, last year, 2020, saw terrible fires in Australia and in California here in the US. But in fact, 2020 globally was one of the least active fire years on record. I could go on and on, uh, sea level rise, economic impact. But in fact, while the globe has warmed significantly, we've not seen any changes in these kinds of events that at least we can detect and say are there with confidence. But Stephen Coonan, I mean, I've, I've mentioned this in the past too, and the fact that we're setting uh, global records for grain crops, for instance. There's another one. Uh, the dams in Australia that were predicted to run dry haven't. In fact, uh, some are uh, almost full, like uh, in Sydney. Uh, can you explain to me why the science is telling you one thing, but when you go to the newspapers and the activist groups and all that kind of stuff, they're telling you a completely different story of the world going to hell. Yeah, so there is a long game of telephone that goes on. It starts with the underlying research papers and the data. It goes into these assessment reports. 
It then moves to the summaries of the assessment reports, which are heavily influenced by the government. And then it goes to the media and ultimately to the politicians and the public. And as you go through that chain, as the information is refined, packaged, there is ample opportunity for misinformation or mischief by the time it gets to non-expert consumers. But can, there's also, I think, a complicity uh, in this misinformation by politicians. Uh, how do you explain the fact that someone like Greta Thunberg, a teenager with a, a catastrophist kind of view of all this, gets invited, gets a platform at the United Nations or European Parliament or the French Parliament or wherever, and real scientists who actually know this stuff and aren't catastrophists don't get the invites, don't get the promotion, don't get the platforms. Explain that. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a scientist. I'm not a social scientist. It's hard for me to get into people's heads. On the other hand, there's a famous journalist and commentator, H.L. Mencken, here in the States, who said something like the following, the quote is in the book, uh, the purpose of practical politics is to keep the public alarmed by a series of threats, mostly imaginary. And in fact, the politicians have to motivate, inspire people, and uh, the over-exaggeration of threats is one of the ways in which they do that. Yeah, well, I guess it's up to, uh, to readers now to be able to uh, see for themselves the science that you have presented, and it's in your book, Unsettled, which they should order from their favourite online bookstore. I recommend uh, Book Depository or A Books, but whatever, whatever gets the book to you, go for it. Stephen Coonan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.